So today uh, I'll be discussing the topic Men's Sleep. It's a collection of essays by uh, Kumar Vikram, who is a bilingual poet, essays, translator and uh, editor. So, uh, and this collection of essays uh, contains literary, cultural, socio-political and some personal essays. So my first thought when I got this book was why it's titled Men's Sleep? And uh, I was wondering why should there be uh, men's liberation when they are the liberated ones? When they are ruling us in a patriarchal society like India where uh, they take almost all the decisions. Uh, and of course it's a man's world. So why should we have men's sleep? I was curious to know, of course, he's talking about some other things or he's trying to uh, put his ideas why the book is titled Men's Sleep. So let's start with uh, asking Kumar Vikram why the book is titled Men's Sleep. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And uh, first, uh, you know, I would like to express my gratitude and my happiness this is my first visit to Kerala and uh, I, it's a great festival and I, uh, the people are so warm and so welcoming and I'm really very happy to be here. And uh, yes, of course, you know, uh, this question has been asked before to me many a time and uh, my first reply is that uh, had it not been called Men's Sleep, this question wouldn't have risen. So it is there uh, for, so that a question can be asked about it. And, uh, and of course, uh, you know, uh, this is just one of the essays of this book. There are ma other essays or different types of essays. But uh, I wanted to project this idea, the Men's Sleep. There are three, four points I want to make and I really don't want to, uh, you know, I would say that I'm, I'm um, uh, working on a very, uh, very, it's a, it's a risky, uh, risky area, you know, because when you say men's slave, the first question came in your mind is that, uh, uh, you know, men are liberated enough. In fact, uh, uh, to to share with you when i when i uh, decided to call it men's life uh, my my wife's first response was ki ab kitna liberation chahiye you know how much how, how much more liberation men <laughs> need that you want uh, this kind of book but of course four things which i i want to share with you and the uh, and the rather serious idea which is behind it one you know the f the first essay which I wrote on this topic that was way back that was um, almost in 2004 five and it got published in Little Magazine. I I it is really very really painful and because the statistics support that so we can't help it about when you hear about all these issues related to uh, female feticide and infanticide. And uh, in uh, 2001 census and 2011 census, you know, the, the shocking data came before us where not only what we consider as the most, uh, you know, a rather more conservative societies, say, in, in the North India, in, in Rajasthan, in Haryana or Punjab or Delhi, not only in those parts, but also in a, in a more... Uh, I would say more educated society like even Kerala, even districts of Tamil Nadu, these things are happening happening at a uh, at an alarming rate. And the second part of it is that it is happening uh, among the more educated and urban families. So my idea was that you know we had uh, we got independence 75 years ago. We have a we have a constitution of India uh, which formally guarantees and gives equality uh, uh, to all citizens. And we have been brought up, apparently we have been brought up on the, on the ideas of democracy, on the ideas of civil rights, on the ideas of uh, uh, gender equality. But uh, at the, uh, even after seven decades, there is a wide, there is a wide ranging gap between the two genders. And, uh, Men's lib is, when we say men's lib, it means that m not only women need to be liberated from the ideas of patriarchy, even men need to be liberated from the ideas of patriarchy. 
so there is this uh, the 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 concept of uh, you know the, the kind of a superiority complex which is ingrained in men which which they have been trained to behave in a particular way they need to be liberated from that that is what i mean by men's liberation the liberation of men because uh, you know the impact of patriarchy on women is all too obvious but the impact of patriarchy on men is not obvious it not recognized because there is a there are gender prescribed roles for men also and you are supposed to fit in there as as there are gender prescribed roles for women and you are supposed to fit in there so so you need to be uh, liberated and uh, you know the, the the feminist movement the women's uh, empowerment movement there has been this uh, i would say the lingo is that you know the women are n are no less than men women are we, uh, they they need to walk shoulder to shoulder to men Th women have to catch up that means that men have achieved men have arrived men are perfect only the women have to be there where it is not the the fact is not uh, uh, you know uh, 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 not that men are not perfect ha you know had men be perfect our society would have been uh, in a, a different much much different than what it is so uh, uh, if so uh, what has happened that the entire focus is on on uh, men adopting this kind of superiority and this kind of patronizing tone where where they are they they they, they believe that they are you know they are supporting women to to come up and to to perform better in in their life but uh, at i the last point which i make i believe if uh, if we look at the history of uh, modern india the social reforms in modern india starting from if i can say from raja ram mohan roy to ishwar chand vidya sagar and of course uh, uh, to 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 gandhi to periya to narayan guru to to ambedkar and so on and so forth if the hallmark of progressive men if the hallmark of revolutionary men was to talk to us to push for gender equality the hallmark of a contemporary modern progressive man must be for him to introspect and push for this kind of men's liberation which i am talking about um, there is one thing that i noticed uh, in that essay is that you are saying it's fatal for men also the damage uh, it's uh, neither uh, recognized by society or the individual but uh, don't you think feminism is enough or or uh, we have this notion uh, that feminism is only for women why can't men be feminists no i think uh, you know i i don't want to because we don't have much time so i don't want to quote quote it these issues have been discussed there you know there is a concept of male feminists male feminist is entirely different thing male feminist means that uh, you are uh, you are pushing for the uh, for the empowerment of women but you are not looking at at uh, the the male the male structure the infrastructure which uh, of which you are yourself a part so it's a more a like of a patronizing tone that you are adopting and uh, the i the when i say that it is it is uh, Uh, patriarchy is, uh, is 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 equally bad for for men you know what happens it is uh, there is a there is a philosopher a uh, thinker of australia steve budolf whom i have quoted here he runs a movement called manhood and uh, he talks about how we are the the men have been have been you know led to believe that they are superior but psychos what happens psychologically if a common person if a common man for that matter if he is if he confronts a woman you know who is intelligent who is powerful he is not able to handle he is not able to understand how to how to you know respond how to behave and that's why you know what happens that all these ideas you know because ultimately uh, the, the psychology of any person is to sort of overpower you know and that's why the these elements of violence this element of uh, you know uh, trying to usurp the uh, the other uh, woman 
uh, all these ideas in fact he goes to the extent of uh, of saying that even even the issues related to 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 rapes and all are 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 psychologically related with these ideas which men have been led to believe in now if it's self inflicted uh, gender codes if men are internalizing that shouldn't we start uh, uh, re or uh, unlearn things from our own families that's the main thing when i when i said the st boot of bit of all you 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 he stresses he gives so much of a stress on parenting how one of his essays is how we turn our boys into creeps you know because there is an understated despite our education despite our modernity there is an understated uh, uh, you know i i would say discrimination unconsciously sometimes consciously and sometimes even unconsciously we are doing between our boys and between our girls so it has to start from family that's the that's the basic that's the basic there's no uh, there's no conflict then uh, i'll move on to the next uh, essay where uh, you in the introduction you were talking about your travel to lenten and uh, you noticed that some of the statues were being removed like that of havelock or nail because uh, as part of uh, Uh, removing the oppress uh, oppressors in a post colonial milieu so yeah uh, uh, in the introduction i talk about you know when if you visit london you know london is so so you know it looks very familiar to you because as i have mentioned the architecture is very familiar it reminds you of bombay or calcutta and uh, and the language is not a problem so if uh, you are able to negotiate you know you can hail a taxi you can you can you can buy anything from a shop because the language is not an issue and uh, so when you when you go to the national gallery of london uh, right there there is a huge uh, uh, statue of havelock and then there the description of havelock is there he havelock is who is havelock he is one of the uh, one of the generals who led the charge in 1857 from on 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 the british army and he was one of the one of the most uh, uh, you know cruel you know generals and then there is a neil who who was from madras regiment and uh, he was also uh, i was uh, as the history bears out one of the cruelest ones and uh, he was so cruel and his his uh, Uh, his cruelty in in suppressing the 1857 uh, 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 you know this revolt in kanpur and and alabad uh, and in lucknow it traveled it travels far and wide that in in the 1927 itself there was a movement in madras to remove the the neel statue which was there and it actually got removed in 1937 itself because because he was actually a, a you know a symbol of cruelty but when i am talking about uh, uh, you might have noticed that we remove the statues of our colonizers and that our national icons are placed there which is fine enough that uh, generally speaking that is how it happens all over the world but uh, if if you can give me an example i would be very happy i haven't seen any movement or any action where they remove a statue of a male icon and replace the with with a statue of a woman when you when you change the name of a road and you know you change the uh, name of a road f- uh, say if it is after uh, some some british name and you remove it because you you don't like it and you want some uh, some indian name to be there but i i don't see uh, any movement any action where a woman's name is you know it is replaced by a woman's name so you know what happens that even if we are talking about uh, uh about revolutionary ideas what happens that ultimately one revolutionary idea which is which is uh, <coughs> led by a, a, a male infrastructure that gets replaced by another male infrastructure and the women remain on the margins all the time so uh, this is a this is this is something which uh, uh, you know i don't know it uh i firmly believe uh people some people may or may not like it but if you go at the basics there are only two religions that's man and woman actually there are only two cultures man and woman you know there is a there is a lot of talk about this intercaste marriage interreligious marriage and we understand what are the conflicts behind that 
we understand that people have been you know they have been uh, they have paid for their life because they wanted to get married uh, to a different caste or to a different religion having said that all marriages are actually interreligious uh, uh, inter intercultural all marriages are intercultural because we are talking about two cultures which is man and woman and uh, in a utopian society in a european in a utopian world when everybody would be equal as we say when they when everybody will be equal when there will be no uh, you know distinction between uh, poor and uh, and the rich when there will be no distinction between uh, or discrimination based on caste culture uh, caste and class or religion is still there would be dynamics of man and woman because that's the that's the basic you know on on which our human society is based on and if we if we are able to get, uh, to 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 put forth that uh, kind of vision that kind of agenda a lot of our uh, you know ideas will uh, would uh, uh, need relook and they need to be relocated you just said that uh, marriage is uh, intercultural so why is it that it's always the woman who will have to adapt to the other culture she will have to forget about her life uh, her surroundings uh, even her food habits and uh, and just one day she moves on to another and she adapts to uh, that life it has not changed how it it won't change because that is what we are discussing if it won't change because that uh, that idea of patriarchy and it's very good that we discussed you know because one point which i missed out which i really wanted to point out that then what happens to the dilemma of the of this modern liberated man who really wants to have this kind of uh, you know relationship on equal equal footing but you know the overall infrastructure is not good enough for i as an individual m may like to be on completely equal terms with my with my spouse with my partner but my male infrastructure will not allow me to be that you know so what happens many a time you will you know this is general complaint it happens <laughs> that you say that uh, when uh, in, during the days of courtship there is there is more equality and it uh, or in the early years of marriage there is more equality man is supposed to be more understanding and then man you know gets into uh, gradually into the conventional conservative patriarchal ideas you know i as i look at it it's like it's like uh, uh, you know your that that road is not built for him he can travel a bit he can travel he can try at his individual level to be uh, on equal terms but uh, the wide road which is before him is is filled with potholes and uh, he has to decide ultimately to be part of the pot pothole i think in india uh, we just don't marry that person we marry the whole family so uh, it will be difficult for the man <laughs> as well to take decisions on his own don't you think see uh, i think uh, uh, how do we take it you know we have come out every society in at least in indian context we are coming out from the from the days of joint uh, family and even if we are not in the joint family system we carry those sentiments we carry those emotions and uh, so i think it will take a long time before we uh, we come to the uh, to the understanding of the fact that marriage uh, basically it's a it's uh, about between two individuals who are connected with a larger family i mean you know this point cannot be taken to uh, to a uh, to extreme you know ultimately there has to be some even if we talk about individuals individuals are also located in a in a social context so ultimately we have to go for some kind of a middle path only you know we cannot because there have been problems with the joint uh, uh, family system but uh, we also hear about the problems of the nuclear family where there is no support system you know and uh, even during uh, the this covid the nuclear families they experience the kind of problems which they experience and uh, there are a lot of talk about how the people who are living together they are able to support each other so uh, it cannot be either a nor you know it has to be somewhere we have to find our uh, our um, uh, balance and uh, that is for for each individual and uh, each uh, family to decide you know i suppose 
Uh, of course, uh, we need family support, but I think um, the extended family exert more pressure regarding our personal matters. Yeah, of course, you know, I mean, uh, we don't want to talk about it, but uh, if you look at it, uh, those who uh, who romantically uh, who romanticize the joint family system they will never talk about uh, the how women have uh, have been the backbone of such joint family system and they have been completely unrecognized and we only hear about uh, men you know the people will talk about uh, uh, how their eldest uncle used to you know keep everybody together but they will never talk about uh, the women who were who were behind that kind of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, joint family system and in fact uh, uh, almost uh, at their own cost they the, the that uh, the system the and, and the romance of joint family system uh, was carried forward i think the problem is with uh, how we internalize certain things about family relationships or about this gender codes uh, for example just now a man was uh, putting that light there we hardly noticed it suppose it was a woman who was doing that all of us would have stopped for a second and watched it so this is so deeply ingrained these gender codes i think we need to change that we need to change that but you know i want to give you some other perspective you know because uh, <laughs> uh, when you talk about gender codes you know because uh, uh, there is a poem in hindi which is not here which i have written you know i have created a, a, a scenario in which uh, you know the like guests have come some guests have come and the male uh, the, the male uh, you know the protagonist of that house he is required to serve tea or water to the guests that's the scenario and that the gender code does not subscribe to this and the kind of uh, if he wants to he personally he doesn't have issues but he has to almost like uh, cross the cross the, uh, the 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 gender bounds which are there on him and the the very uh, notion of bringing a tea coffee or water in tray from kitchen to drawing room to serve to the uh, to the to the guests you know puts him in such a uh, uh, such a thinking that uh, he 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 you know he j he wouldn't hold the tray with two hands because it's like you know uh, when you hold the tray with two hands it's it's like completely submitting yourself you know so he would he holds the tray with one hand you know and uh, and then uh, right uh, as he's coming from the kitchen from there itself he start talking with the guest and asking i hope you had no problem in in finding this house because he wants to to distract that guest from the scenario of him holding that tray and bringing it before him and then he also thinks that maybe the guest would be thinking that maybe uh, uh, maybe uh, he, the, his mother is ill maybe his his uh, wife is not there maybe his daughters are not grown up or maybe he is not uh, uh, rich enough to have a maid servant uh, that's why he is bringing that tray uh, of coffee and serving it to me so when you say about gender codes uh, wh what i mean to say that gender code is is happening on the other sides also of course for those who are willing to 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 think and introspect you know now we were talking about this uh, statues were being removed uh, in a post colonial milieu but in uh, in present india the bulldozer represents something else it's like a tool for uh, oppressing the minorities yeah, yeah this you know we are changing the names of the roads we are changing so many things changing the names and it has got an agenda i feel uh, uh, it's it's not like uh, it's quite different from what you have written about destroying the uh, statues of havelock or nail in current political situation don't you think uh, this is uh, the See, this uh, you know i would say that any idea any particular idea even the idea of decolonization taken to the extreme will ultimately bounce back will become self defeating you know 
so uh, we want decolonization we have been ruled by the, uh, by a, a, a foreign power for 200 years they of they changed our way of thinking they changed our language they made a, a very substantial intervention into into our uh, uh, our culture but uh, if if we adopt this attitude of uh, everything which was pre colonial will, was good and was uh, you know uh, if you if we start romanticizing everything which was there uh, before they are coming and and then we try to apply it in the contemporary times i don't think it can it can disturb us uh, it can create uh, some kind of talking points it can also lead to conflicts but this is something which cannot be sustained and uh, ultimately you know the, the the time will catch up with you uh, i i uh, to quote from your text, you have got uh, Gandhi uh, saying that keep the negative emotions of hatred and violence in check. I think that is very relevant even today. Yes, of course. You know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I consider myself, uh, some, I have written in my bios that I am a post-Ambedkar Gandhian. You know, that, that sounds, that may sound a very... Uh, confusing for you, but uh, you know, I I believe in Gandhian values, but I'm I am I am quite uh, uh, also conscious about the the criticism which is which is you know against Gandhi. But uh, my idea is always to find uh, some kind of a middle ground, you know, uh, among the uh, historical ideas and then the personalities. And uh, when we talk about uh, this uh, resistance through non-violence uh, that remains one of the uh, one of the most uh, uh, you know relevant and one of the most uh, uh, I would say uh, you know, continuing idea and, and powerful idea uh, with us. I mean, uh, people like uh, even contemporary times, or Martin Luther King Jr. or even Nelson Mandela, you know, they were they were they, they were uh, uh, you know influenced by him. So uh, Gandhi and uh, this, of course, uh, this remains quite relevant. Uh, there are many more interesting essays in the book uh, about Dalit, minority and tribal uh, discourse where uh, uh, they are, uh, uh, they write their autobiography and through that they are expressing themselves. They are getting voice to talk about themselves and there is another essay about uh, translation which I really wanted to talk about but uh, uh, time is almost done and uh, I think Kumar Vikram wanted to read one of his poems so I'll just m uh, okay so we are already at the end I think it was going on well and we had some interested audience here. yeah I really yeah. wanted to talk about yeah. that anyway, uh, autobiography you know, issue. Uh, we need to stick to the schedule and uh, it's not a it's not a book of poems it's a book of essays but there is a poem with which I end, and this is called Male Bonding, and it has a sub uh, heading called An Autobiographical Essay in Verse. So, this is also a kind of an essay, but in verse. Male Bonding. This was published a long time back in Indian literature by Sahit Academy. I would like to read it for you, and then we can sort of uh, close the session. My mother, my wife, my daughter, my sister in the background, their sweet feminine voices, their typical dresses, saris, salwars, feminine shirts, pants, frocks. Now only the other species surround me in our house. My brother, his deep voice gone forever, wearing a full sleeved rolled shirt, pair of trousers, and donning a mustache, walked briskly into the recesses of time. Father hung his boots at the onset of the last winters without a warning, unlike his loud and clear voice cloaked in pajamas and kurta or in trousers and shirts 
that woke up us siblings in the mornings for the schools like daily rituals. Lesser number of a stallion pair of shoes in the house, shaving cream of only one variety, single brush and a razor to boot, virile underpants of single size, soak on the balcony, reminding me of the ones that were bought for me for the first time by father and brother years back accosting me secretly into the bedroom that summer evening, smiling as well as concerned to check if they fitted me, myself all too embarrassed and proud and confused. A mangrove of males gone forever. I stand singled out in the altered sex ratio with my odd voice, macho gears, and appetite, like a grown-up sapling among the heap of fallen trees sticking its neck out. My gynic life givers protecting me heroically, taking me for some endangered species. Thank you, Kumar Vikram, uh, for the short and crisp talk on uh, we couldn't, of course, uh, uh, talk about all the issues you have written. We uh, do have a look at the essays. There are some interesting pieces. So thank you all. Thank you. Thanks a lot.